Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're talking about 420, uh, PEP 420, which implements implicit namespace packages and how it kind of makes init.py optional, but I wouldn't recommend using it personally. Uh, but what we're going to go over today is what are namespace packages, how are the old ways to make namespace packages, and what is the new way to make namespace packages. And uh, finally, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, my experience, my personal experience with namespace packages and why I don't make them anymore and uh, some quirks. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so we are going to be talking about PEP 420 today, which is titled Implicit Namespace Packages. Uh, but before we jump into that, I want to show you what a namespace package is and how you can kind of think about it conceptually. Um, when I think about namespace packages, I think about some features in other languages, such as partial classes. Uh, they're not exactly the same, but partial classes allow you to define a class in multiple different files. And namespace packages in Python allow you to define parts of a module hierarchy in different file system or module locations and uh, join them together in a single namespace. One example of where you might use this is if your company uh, has a particular top level namespace and you want to provide multiple different libraries but not have them all be in the same package, uh, you could use namespace packages to have like, I don't know, say you were at Yelp for instance, you would have yelp.foo and yelp.bar. Uh, those could be provided by two different installable units and uh, joined together in a single namespace. That might be one example of namespace. Um, I used to use namespace packages for my personal libraries on PyPI until I realized that they're a pain in the butt to deal with and don't really play nicely, and I'll talk some more about that later. Um, so I used to nest things under an ASPY namespace, ASPY. It has nothing to do with my name or Python or an ASP is a snake though, but anyway. Uh, so let's talk about namespace packages and how they work. So if you were to make a model hierarchy, uh, I'm going to actually have two different sys path routes today, and we're going to be using Python path. Usually you don't use Python path. Uh, it's almost always wrong. But we're going to make two different uh, module hierarchies, and we're going to put a namespace in both of those. We're going to actually do... I should have just done this in the first command. Uh, so we're going to have uh, root 1 and root 2. They're going to have two namespaces in them. Uh, normally when you make a package, and package is kind of a overloaded term. In this time, in this case, I'm using package to talk about module packages, a folder within init.py. Uh, when you make a package in Python, you need an init.py. So we're going to make those root one. Uh, and we're going to prove that wrong later in this video, but <laughs> you make a normal package, you need an init.py. And I'm going to make a, um, a simple file in each of these. Uh, in root one, we're going to make, oops, a.py. And in root two, we're going to make b.py. And I need to delete that type of file. a.bp. I don't know what's going on in my brain. Um, but yeah, so now we have this module hierarchy. And you'll notice if we do Python path equals root one, root two. Uh, on Windows, I believe this is a semicolon, but on other not Windows platforms, it'll be a colon. Uh, if we do import ns.a, you'll see that it imports properly, but we can't import from ns.b. And the Python path put both of those on our sys.path. And so that's the core problem that namespace packages are trying to solve. It allows you to provide a namespace in multiple places and join them together. So let me show you the old way to solve namespace packages. Uh, r slash star slash init.py. The old way to solve namespace packages was to put special code inside this init.py. And let me grab that code because it's a little bit terse. Uh, there's actually two ways to do this. This is the, uh, that's got a typo in it. <laughs> you know, touch on the typo. This is the old way to do it. Uh, this is a standard library module called package util. And it allows you, it, it provides this special extend path helper to set this double under path variable correctly. And it does some, I'm not going to go into the details. It does some magic with sys.path to figure out where this namespace package actually lives. Uh, you need to include this in all of the init.py files. So they all need to contain these contents. And now if we try and rerun our demo from before, uh, ns.a and ns.b, uh, you'll notice that these are both importable now. And you know, if we look at ns, it points to this root one, but it actually kind of contains contents from both of them. Um, in weird ways. Well, actually, I think it doesn't contain contents. And that's one of the main problems with namespace packages. There isn't a good way to share code in an init.py. 
but this is the first strategy for doing namespace packages. Uh, this is provided by the standard library, so you don't need to install anything to make it work, and it kind of just works. Uh, let's talk about the second way to do that, which is also code in init.py, uh, but this uses package resources instead. And you can't really mix these, um, especially the package resources one. It doesn't play nicely with standard namespace packages. Uh, but this looks similar to the other one. This has side effects. <laughs> It does some terrible things with sys.modules to basically do the same thing that the other one does. Um, and you'll also notice this import package resources. This is provided by setup tools. And if you've seen some of my other profiling videos, you'll know that this import is really slow. So you really want to avoid this import whenever possible. And if you're doing these type of namespace packages, you can't avoid it. This will always incur a huge startup cost, which is unfortunate. Uh, but you need to put that in both of those as before. And if we run the same demo here, ns.a import ns.b, uh, we'll see that it allows us to import all three of those. Now, interestingly, ns here is actually the second module and not the first one. I don't know why that is. I'm not going to try and figure it out. Uh, both of these are obsoleted by the, the new method, which is implicit namespace packages. Um, uh, in implicit namespace packages, you simply have a folder with no init.py, and that makes it automatically a namespace package. So I'm just going to delete those init.py files. I'm also going to delete pyc files, because if I remember correctly, uh, oops, delete. If I remember correctly, they interfere with this a little bit, because the old init.pyc is chilling out. Uh, so now if we do the same thing as before, uh, there's no init.pys. If we do tree root, uh, tree dot, uh, you'll see we have the same structure as before. No init.py inside this ns package. Uh, and we're still able to import ns.a and we're able to import ns.b. And this is, that's pep421. Basically it enables implicit namespace packages by leaving out init.py. Uh, and to compare the module from before, we get this special namespace module. Now this output might be slightly different depending on your Python version. Like if we look in 3.10, uh, this lists the frozen import lib external namespace loader, which is um, just an implementation detail of the module system. It actually ends up in this loader here, and that's how the import system works, but I'm not going to go over the import system today. Uh, but that's an, that's an implicit namespace package caused by not having a init.py. Now the... the uh, the clever observer may note, oh, well, you just have a folder. Any folder can now be a namespace package, right? And yes, that is one of one of the uh, negative side effects of this, is any directory now just becomes a package. Even though folder is just an empty file and you didn't intend it to be a Python package, um, it's a namespace package. This also has some weird issues on Windows. If you look on Windows, uh, let's look at the 3.10 installation. If you look on Windows, the way it's set up is there is a Python executable, and then there's a lib directory. This is where the standard library lives. You can see all of the standard library modules there. Um, and this has some weird effects. So if we were to run that executable, iPhone 3.10, python.exe, you can import like the OS, mo OS module. Um, it comes from C, Python, lib, OS. You can also import lib.os. <laughs> and this is a completely separate copy of the OS module. Um, so there is two copies of the standard library. You can also import any of these other names as well. So you can import DLLs or doc or basically any folder that exists is now importable, which can have all sorts of weird side effects. Um, but that's, that's one of the quirks of namespace packages. Uh, the other thing that's kind of unfortunate about namespace packages is the packaging of them changes a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to go over that. You can Google uh, packaging namespace packages and follow this link. These are purple because I had to re-record this video because it screwed up my sound. Um, but hey, you can follow the tutorials here. Basically, you have to use a completely separate helper than what you would use for normal uh, or fine packages. Yeah, normally you use find packages, but in for namespace packages, you have to use this special one because uh, this one stops at directories that don't have init.py files. So 
You have to use a different set of packaging tools. Uh, also, of note, a lot of developer tools have problems with namespace packages. Uh, MyPy historically has had all sorts of weird quirks with namespace packages. I think they've fixed most of them, but um, I don't know. It's been a problem for a long time, so I've, I've personally avoided it for that reason. Uh, PyTest, I know, has a bunch of bugs with, <laughs> with namespace packages. This is something that I should be fixing because I maintain PyTest. Um, but yeah, namespace packages are a little bit fiddly there. Uh, I have one remaining namespace package on PyPI, the ASP refactor imports. And the annoying thing about this is somebody else owns the package ASP, so there's all sorts of like weird conflicts that can happen. And it's just, it's a lot of work to maintain namespace packages. So my recommendation is don't just make a normal package and you won't have to deal with any of these weird quirks and you won't have to think about namespace packages and all of their, their oddities. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I wanted to talk about for PEP420. Um, and most of the rationale for making this PEP was to eliminate those two hacks that I showed before because they, they kind of work. They also have some, some weirdnesses around you know, zip packages or um, different file systems or, or weird stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, hopefully you found this interesting. Uh, if there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.